Hello, everyone. My name is Sarah Fuchikowski, and I'm a research associate in the Environmental Change Research Group at the University of Northern British Columbia. Today, I'll be sharing with you my work on mapping research on Inuit traditional ecological knowledge of polar bear in Arctic Canada. I'd like to acknowledge the support and guidance of my master's supervisors, Dr. Tristan Pierce and Dr. Graham Whitelaw, as well as my other co-authors listed here. A species at the forefront of the Arctic climate change discourse is the polar bear, or Ursus maritimus, meaning bear of the sea. Across the Arctic, there are 19 subpopulations of polar bears, 13 of which are entirely or partially in Canada and marked on the map in red. Polar bears are one example of a species that is highly sensitive to changes in sea ice due to their reliance on this habitat for hunting and travel. Biological studies have found that some bear populations are declining and predictive modeling has forecasted significant declines in some subpopulations across Canada. However, there is some disagreement among some scientists and Inuit about the health of certain polar bear subpopulations under changing climatic conditions. Polar bears are a species of significance to Inuit culturally, spiritually, economically, and for subsistence. And the species is deeply rooted in culture, heritage, tourism, and identity in Canada. Inuit have developed a cumulative body of knowledge, practice, and belief evolving by adaptive processes and handed down through generations about the relationship of people with one another and with their environment. This traditional ecological knowledge or TEK allows Inuit to respond to a large number of variations in the environment, including those associated with ongoing climate change. Polar bears can be a lightning rod for debate. I invite all of you to think about the last time you may have seen or heard about polar bears in the news. The conflicting perspectives between some Inuit and scientists on the current and future health of polar bear subpopulations in Canada means that polar bear monitoring and management are complex and involve many stakeholders. Polar bears in Canada are managed through co-management a governance approach defined by the sharing of power and decision-making responsibility between resource users and government bodies. Each region of Inuit Nunungat, the Inuit homeland in Canada, has unique decision-making processes which must respond to ongoing social and environmental change, necessitating that co-management continue to be adaptive. Land settlement agreements across Inuit Nunangad legislate that polar bear co-management draws upon the best available information to inform decisions, including science and Inuit TEK. The extent of available polar bear TEK in the literature is unknown, yet co-managers must rely, at least to some degree, on recorded TEK to make decisions. This leads me to the aim of this research, which was to systematically scope and examine literature on Inuit TEK about polar bears in Arctic Canada. This aim was achieved through three objectives. First, to assess the contributions of TEK about polar bear to the literature and how these contributions have been represented. Second, to examine the geographic, disciplinary, and TEK foci of the literature and how these have changed over time. And finally, to relate documented TEK to monitoring parameters for polar bears and future research needs. Secondary data was collected from existing sources through a systematic scoping exercise of published research on polar bear TEK. Scoping reviews are designed to identify the types of available evidence in a given field, examine how research is conducted on a certain topic, and to identify and analyze knowledge gaps. A scoping review was best suited to addressing my objectives as the goal was to determine the scope of polar bear TEK literature and give a clear indication of the volume of literature and studies available as well as an overview of their focus. The literature was searched using Web of Science and Google Scholar to find English language documents published before January 1st, 2020, which focused on polar bear and Arctic Canada. To capture reports within these sources that include Inuit TEK of polar bear, keywords for polar bear, like white bear or nanuk, were used in combination with different keywords for TEK, like local knowledge or indigenous knowledge. 
On this slide, I'll summarize how I ended up with 55 documents for review. After inputting my search string into Web of Science and Google Scholar and removing duplicates, websites, and web pages, I was left with 272 documents which met my search criteria. The next stage of the search involved examining each document to ensure that the full text was available and that TEK was in fact discussed. In the final stage, documents were excluded if polar bears were not the primary focus or the documents were not situated within Inuit Nunagat. 12 documents identified through searching reference sections were added to the 43 retained documents for a total of 55 documents meeting exclusion and inclusion criteria. A questionnaire was developed to survey the retained documents and characterize the polar bear TEK present. The questionnaire begins with general characteristics of the article, followed by fixed questions, including which categories of TEK were present, informed by Peter Usher's 2000 paper. Usher's categories provide one way of describing TEK, and the categories include factual knowledge about the environment, factual knowledge about the use of the environment, cultural values about the environment, and finally, the knowledge system itself. There are many interesting results from this review, but I will share some salient ones here. Documents span the time period from 2001 to 2019, with 15% of documents being published in 2010. In general, there has been a gradual growth in polar bear TEK publications since 2001, but a recent decline compared to a decade ago. More than half of the documents focused exclusively on Nunavut, which wasn't surprising given the geographic size and large population of Nunavut in comparison to the rest of Inuit Nunavut. The three most researched polar bear subpopulations occur entirely or partially in Nunavut, which relates to the finding that the geographic focus of articles was unevenly distributed between jurisdictions within Inuit Nunavut. While many documents included informal TEK content or more general references to TEK, 21 TEK studies characterized by the intentional, explicit, and primary collection or use of TEK were identified from the 55 total documents. What I'll do now is share results from the analysis of these 21 TEK studies. The majority were from grade literature sources and only a fifth of TEK studies featured Inuit co-authorship. The 21 TEK studies were represented by 11 lead authors with two researchers serving as lead author of almost half of the documents. In total, the TEK studies included only 13 original interview data sets. The studies were sorted by Usher's categories of TEK, and while all studies documented category one, factual knowledge about the environment, only 29% or six studies included category four, the knowledge system itself. Usher's categories being disproportionately represented suggests that published polar bear research has not consistently engaged with Inuit cultural values and the knowledge system itself. In summary, the aim of this research was to systematically scope and examine literature on Inuit TEK about polar bears in Arctic Canada. We demonstrated using a scoping approach that Inuit TEK about polar bear has been documented in the literature. However, there's an uneven distribution of the geographic, disciplinary, and TEK foci of the polar bear TEK literature from Arctic Canada. The findings of this research suggests that there has been limited research which has directly and systematically synthesized polar bear TEK in the Canadian Arctic, and there are few studies from which insights for future polar bear subpopulation health can be obtained. Our results offer preliminary insights on how polar bear TEK documentation has occurred and highlights opportunities for increased contribution and study of TEK in the future. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I am happy to take questions.